Your books are always a good read and very accessible to a wide audience. Yet we often hear, don't let the facts get in the way of a good story. How do you make sure that you write a good read but stay true to the characters and events? Who from? <laughs> oh, seriously, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't think my facts have been challenged particularly, have they? No. I mean, I have a different way of writing, OK? I, this may take longer than two minutes, but I'll say it like this. I don't want to... If you are my reader and I am your writer, and I am describing to you this event, I don't want to hand you binoculars and say, mm. from the point of, two point of view of 2007, take these binoculars and look way, way, way back to something that happened 60 years ago. I want to hand you a magnifying glass. I want to take you in close, have a look at what happened, and I want to make, I want to use the techniques of fiction, the devices of fiction, and apply them to non-fiction. So you have, so hopefully, if it works, for the reader to judge if it works. But make no mistake, my intent is to take the reader in close so that at the moment that Hitler says, right, it's war, I want the reader to be in the room at the time it happens. And to make that work, I can't pull it out of the top of my head, from behind my back, wherever. I need as much provable detail as I can possibly get and you want the tiny detail, the footnoted fact for want of a better term. To do that I devour long transcripts of interviews, of movies, of reputable books and I'm constantly taking notes and researching and getting as much stuff as I can. I do not pretend to be an historian. I am a historian. I love the story part. For others, for the eminent historians, to judge the uh, whether it works or where, the, the, the perspective, the analysis of the times. I love the times themselves. And so what I want is to make the story live and breathe. Uh, you know, part of my role as a writer to, is to look at as broad a mass of material as I can gather, to interview as many people who were there at the time as I can find, who can understand what was going on. And my job as a writer is to say, I'll take that, that and that, and I'll put them, no, no, it'll work better like that. And you sort of shape it all up, and then the great day comes and goes, <clears throat> does it? No, it still doesn't work wrong petrol, that doesn't work, and I'll reconnect that and I'll reconnect that. And you work it out so that you've got something that will speak, will live, will breathe. Now, I suspect this will be read by a lot of history students and uh, will be watched by a lot of history students. I should make the point that most history students, I suspect, won't be doing what I do. They'll be analysing, they'll be... Uh, their job is not, and for most essays, I wouldn't have thought, you'll tell me if I'm wrong, but is not to evoke, is not to do time and place. Their job is to analyse. Hopefully, if I've done an accurate representation of what happened, they will be better able to analyse, but I don't particularly fancy myself as an, an analyst.